five questions and answers to help pass general knowledge CDL permit test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. One, when approaching a curve, you should correct answer, downshift before entering the curve and accelerate slightly as you go through it. Explanation, slow down to a safe speed and downshift to the right gear before entering the curve. This lets you use some power through the curve to help the vehicle be more stable while turning. It allows you to speed up as soon as you're out of the curve. Two, when should you check your mirrors for a lane change? Correct answer, before and after signaling the change, after starting and after completing the lane change. Explanation, you need to check your mirrors to make sure no one is alongside you or about to pass you. Check your mirrors before you change lanes, after you've signaled, right after you start the lane change and after you complete the lane change. 3. No matter how small the cargo is, it should have at least Correct answer 2 tie downs Explanation No matter how small the cargo, it should have at least 2 tie downs 4. Retarders are used by Correct answer Exhaust, electrical, hydraulics, and engine Explanation There are 4 basic types of retarders Exhaust, engine, hydraulics, and electric 5. For your safety, when setting out reflective triangles, you should Correct answer. Hold the triangles between your body and oncoming traffic. Explanation. When putting out the triangles, hold them between yourself and the oncoming traffic for your own safety so other drivers can see you. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL general knowledge from this video. Get access to our full online courses and free sample CDL practice tests at our website. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you. Check us out at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass air brakes CDL permit test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. One. What can legally hold a parking or emergency brake in position for a truck, truck tractor, or bus? Correct answers. Spring pressure. Explanation. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. They must be held on by mechanical force because air pressure can eventually leak away. Spring brakes are usually used to meet these needs. 2. Spring brakes are... Correct answer. Brakes that come on automatically on a truck or tractor when the PSI drops too low. It's made up of powerful springs that are held back by air pressure while you're driving. It's not going to take a full effect until your PSI drops to a certain range, typically 20 to 30 PSI. Explanation. Spring brakes are an important backup system. Powerful springs that automatically apply the brakes if they sense that air pressure has been lost for some reason, such as a leak. They will also apply the brakes if the PSI gets too low, although ideally, you should take control of your brakes before that happens. 3. A typical air brake system is fully charged at... Correct answer. 125 PSI. Explanation. Pumping by the air compressor should start at about 100 PSI and stop at about 125 PSI. 4. The brake pads should be blank for the brakes to be on... Correct answer. Against the drum. Explanation. To stop, the brake shoes and linings are pushed against the inside of the drum. This causes friction, which slows the vehicle. 5. Slack adjusters are... Correct answer. Between the power screw and push rod on disc brakes. A part of the air brake system is used to adjust the brakes. Between the push rod and S-cam on drum brakes. Explanation. Slack adjusters are an important part of your air brake system that allows you to adjust the brakes to ensure that they are safe. They are located in different places, depending on the type of brakes that you have. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL air brakes knowledge from this video. Get access to our full online courses and free sample CDL practice tests at our website. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you. Check us out at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching.
Five questions and answers to help pass combination vehicle CDL permit test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one. Air and electrical lines from the tractor to the trailer should be? Correct answer. Secured, but with enough slack for turns. Explanation. Make sure air and electrical lines are not tangled, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts, and have enough slack for turns. Question number two. How much space should be between the apron and fifth wheel after coupling? Correct answer, none. Explanation. Make sure there is no space between the upper and lower fifth wheel. If there is space, something is wrong. The kingpin may be on top of the closed fifth wheel jaws and the trailer would come too loose very easily. Question number three. You should not use the trailer hand valve while driving because... Correct answer. Of the danger of making the trailer skid. Explanation. Do not use it in driving because of the danger of making the trailer skid. Question number four. What valves permit closing the airlines off when another trailer is not being towed? Correct answer, shutoff valves. Explanation. Shutoff valves are used in the service and supply airlines at the back of trailers used to tow other trailers. Question number five. What is a tractor jackknife? Correct answer. When you lock up the drive tires on the tractor and the tractor spins out sideways, as the trailer continues to push forward. Explanation Rear wheel braking skids occur when the rear drive wheels lock. Because locked wheels have less traction than rolling wheels, the rear wheels usually slide sideways to catch up with the front wheels. With vehicles towing trailers, a drive wheel skid can let the trailer push the towing vehicle sideways, causing a sudden jackknife. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL combination vehicle knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you at mile1press.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass pre-trip inspection CDL permit test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one. When checking the lights at the front of the vehicle, what should you check for? Correct answer. That the lens coverings are there, lights are securely attached, clean, and working properly. Explanation: All the lights will need to be checked at the front, back, and sides of the vehicle. They will need to be checked for covers, cleanliness, security, and that they're working properly. Question number two. What should you check each of the fluids in the engine compartment for? Correct answer. The proper levels. That they're clear of debris. No leakage. Explanation. All fluids should be at the proper level, clean and free of debris, with no leaks. You can also add proper color to this list. Some coolants are red, green, and orange. Red or clear for most power steering. Oil can be a bit difficult. It should be a tan in color, but normally, after use of the vehicle, it gets black. Question number three. True or false? You should check to make sure that the locking jaws are completely wrapped around the shank of the kingpin during your pre-trip inspection. Correct answer? True. Explanation. This is true. The kingpin needs to be completely extended and around the shank of the kingpin. Question number four. Retreaded tires can be on any axle. Correct answer? False. Explanation. The front or steer axle is not allowed to have retreaded tires. Question number five. 
While fanning down, the alarm and light indicating low air pressure should come on at the correct answer, 60 PSI. Explanation. The low air pressure warning light and alarm should come on when the air pressure is around 60 PSI. Feel free to take the free sample test in the link below to test your CDL pre-trip inspection knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass hazardous material CDL endorsement test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one. The hazardous waste manifest should be Correct answer tabbed differently and kept on top of all other paperwork. Explanation Hazardous waste needs to be kept on top of all other paperwork and tabbed differently so that it is easy to find. Question number two. What is Chemtrek's primary job? Correct answer. They coordinate and advise companies on spills. They also link proper authorities with those companies. Explanation. The Chemical Transportation Emergency Center, Chemtrek, in Washington, also has a 24-hour toll-free line. Chemtrek was created to provide emergency personnel with technical information about the physical properties of hazardous materials. Question number three. Drivers of place-carded vehicles transporting hazardous materials must stop blank to blank feet from the nearest rail of a railroad. Correct answer, 15 to 50 feet. Explanation. You must stop 15 to 50 feet before the nearest rail. Proceed only when you are sure no train is coming and you can clear the tracks without stopping. Don't shift gears while crossing the tracks. Question number four. How many different hazard classes are there? Correct answer, nine. Explanation. Hazardous materials are categorized into nine major hazard classes and additional categories for consumer commodities and combustible liquids. Question number five. What is the purpose of a driver place carting their vehicle? Correct answer, to communicate risk. Explanation. The three intents are contain the material, communicate the risk, and assure safe drivers and equipment. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL hazardous material knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass passenger CDL endorsement test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one. Can a bus carry 100 pounds each of class one, class three, class four, and class five hazardous materials? Correct answer, yes. Explanation. Passenger buses can carry up to 100 pounds of each class of hazardous materials and up to 500 pounds total. However, there are some exceptions. Division 2.3, poison gas, and liquid class 6, poison, cannot be carried in any amounts. Explosives and radioactive materials cannot be carried in the passenger area. Question number two. You need to evacuate your bus in an emergency. Passengers should be directed to a safe place no less than blank feet away from the bus. Correct answer, 100. Explanation. Passengers should be moved at least 100 feet away from the bus. Question number three. 
An oncoming vehicle keeps its high beams on. You should deal with this hazard by Correct answer. Looking to the right side of your lane. Explanation. Do not look directly at the lights of oncoming vehicles. Look slightly to the right at a right lane or edge marking if available. Question number four. The standee line is? Correct answer. A two inch line on the floor to the rear of the driver's seat. Explanation. Buses designed to allow standing must have a two inch line on the floor or some other means of showing riders where they cannot stand. This is called the standee line. All standing riders must stay behind it. Question number five. A bus may carry baggage or freight only if it's secured so that, correct answer, the driver can move freely and easily. Any driver can use all exits. Riders are protected from falling or shifting packages. Explanation. Secure baggage and freight in ways that avoid damage and allow the driver to move freely and easily. Allow riders to exit by an open window or door in an emergency and protect riders from injury if carry-ons fall or shift. Feel free to take free sample test in the link below to test your CDL passenger knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice test and CDL practice endorsement test to help educate at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass school bus CDL endorsement test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one, front tire tread depth should be at least, correct answer, 430 seconds. Explanation. Front axle or steer axle tires must have a tread depth of at least 430 seconds of an inch. Question number two. In an emergency, you must evacuate everyone from your school bus. Correct answer. If the position of the bus may change and further increase the danger, if the bus is on fire, Explanation. The driver must evacuate the bus when the bus is on fire or there is a threat of a fire. The bus is stalled on or adjacent to a railroad highway crossing. The position of the bus may change and increase the danger. There is an imminent danger of collision or there is a need to quickly evacuate because of hazardous material spill. Question number three. How far prior to a bus pickup location must the amber warning lights be turned on? Correct answer, 200 feet. Explanation. If the school bus is so equipped, activate alternating flashing amber warning lights at least 200 feet or approximately 5 to 10 seconds before the school bus stop or in accordance with state law. Question number four. During your pre-trip vehicle inspection test, make sure that Correct answer, the emergency exits are undamaged, operate smoothly, and close securely from the inside. The emergency exit warning devices, if so equipped, are working. Explanation, ensure that all emergency exits are not damaged, operate smoothly, and close securely from the inside. Check that any emergency exit warning devices are working properly. Question number five. To load students after you have stopped the school bus. Correct answer. Count the number of students at the bus stop and make sure that all of them board the bus. Explanation. Count the number of students at the bus stop and be sure students board the bus. If possible, know the names of the students at each stop. If a student is missing, ask the other students where the student is. Feel free to take a sample test in the link below to test your CDL school bus knowledge from this video. 
Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass double, triple trailer CDL endorsement test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one, converter dollies. Correct answer, often do not have spring brakes. Explanation, often converter dollies do not have spring brakes. Question number two. With the hand valve on, you should test the trailer brakes by opening the service line valve at the rear of the rig. When you do this, you should hear, correct answer, air escapes from the open valve. Explanation. Open the service line valve, listen for air to escape, and then close the valve. Question number three. The first step in uncoupling a converter dolly is Correct answer To lower its landing gear Explanation The first step in uncoupling a converter dolly is to lower its landing gear Question number 4 When driving with more than one trailer, which trailer should be the first one behind the tractor? Correct answer The heaviest trailer Explanation for the safest handling on the road, the more heavily loaded semi-trailer should be in first position behind the tractor. The lighter trailer should be in the rear. Question number five. You are driving a 100-foot twin trailer combination at 50 miles an hour. The road is dry and visibility is good. You should keep at least blank seconds of space ahead of you. Correct answer, 11. Explanation. One good rule says you need at least one second for each 10 feet of vehicle length at speeds below 40 miles an hour. At greater speeds, you must add one second for safety. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL double triple trailer knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice tests and CDL practice endorsement tests to help educate you at mileonepress.com. Thanks for watching. Five questions and answers to help pass Tanker CDL endorsement test. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy and would like more content about CDL education. Question number one. If you do not have an automatic tank train, when should you drain your air tanks? Correct answer. At the end of each working day. Explanation. If your vehicle does not have an automatic air tank drain, drain your tanks at the end of each working day to remove moisture and oil. Otherwise, the brakes could fail. Question number two. When pre-tripping your tanker, you should check for Correct answer Leaks Explanation On all tank vessels, the most important item to check for are leaks. Check under and around the vehicle for signs of any leaking. Don't carry liquids or gases in a leaking tank. Question number three Separations between compartments inside tanks that have openings or holes in them are called Correct answer, baffles. Explanation. Baffled liquid tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through. The baffles help control the forward and backward liquid surge. Question number four. Empty trucks. Correct answer, may require longer stopping distance than full ones. Explanation. Empty tank vehicles may take longer to stop than full ones. Question number five. When should you inspect the tank vehicle? Correct answer. Before loading it, driving it, or unloading it. Explanation. 
You should inspect a tank vehicle before loading it, driving it, or unloading it. This is to ensure that it is safe to carry out these activities and the vehicle can safely hold its liquid or gas content. Feel free to take a free sample test in the link below to test your CDL tanker knowledge from this video. Get access to our ebooks and audiobooks in the Google Play Store. Find more CDL practice test and CDL practice endorsement test to help educate you at mile1press.com. Thanks for watching.